the Israeli Valley, a breathtaking view that has always attracted a wide range of species trying to eke out their existence. The desert fox searching for food in every corner, the indigenous antelope, and the desert snake that hovers over the smooth sand. But the tranquility here is disturbed by this pack of creatures, the herd known as the Israeli Arsawats. This herd belongs to the tribe known as the Skinny Arsawats, lean-looking Arsim who exploit their nimble build to escape from the wardens of the reserve. The Skinny Arsawats are essentially a part of the Ar tribe, Arsim who communicate between themselves using just one syllable, Ar. Uh, the R signifies for them an abbreviated form of expressing whatever they desire, using this lone syllable to communicate all information. The R tribe are made up of several sub-tribes, such as the sharpened little fingernail tribe. Asawats who in the period of their adolescence grow an extended fingernail that signifies their manhood. This serves them in the hunt for the barboonia in the river. At the conclusion of this meal, he uses the same fingernail to remove the debris between his teeth, the same way one would use a toothpick. Other species from this family are the Havanagila tribe, the religious Asawats, the hipster Asawats, the hairdresser Asawats, the Malvimbari beet, and of course the most veteran species of all, the tribe of the Chai, the Tzomerch, and the Domem. His brain. Uh. Without exception, they all worship one thing. Eleanor. The gods of the Mizrahit. While the younger members of the skinny Asawats tribe worship the younger gods. <laughs> These musical Arsawats also like to spend their spare time playing cards. Uh. Our anthropologists understand this and plant a hidden camera next to a green card table. Let us observe how they react. But what really interests our anthropologists are those that lose in the card game, the victims of the Malvimba Ribbit. These two skinny Arsawats failed to repay a debt from losing a card game. The skinny Arsawats attempt to employ their physical lightness, but the Malveber Ribit is determined to receive his dues. The tension is at its peak. Despite their physical toughness, most members of the tribe are driven by a naive and natural curiosity. They tend to roam and gather behind news reporters covering events in the reserve. For some unknown reason, the Asawats like to congregate behind these reporters and form a connection with a world less familiar. Towards the anthropologists who have come to document them, however, they will be less friendly. This tribe belongs to a group with a small brain and penis, a tribe who particularly enjoys partaking in mass altercations. <laughs> Katla means a fight. Unfortunately, they didn't make it in time to this fight. The park rangers got there first. The average speed of the skinny Arsawats can reach up to 35 kilometers an hour. The park rangers are heavy, and the frightened Arsawats understand that they mustn't be caught. They increase their pace. But eventually, they realize they have no choice, and they disperse. One of the Arsawats who escaped suddenly identifies a shiny iPhone placed between a pair of vegetarian hipsters who have come for a picnic in the reserve. He grabs it and retreats. An iPhone such as this can sustain him for an entire year. He will dig a hole and keep it for darker days ahead. Huh? However, the female hipster fails to comprehend him. The Asawad will place it in a bag and bury it in a hole. There are days of hunger ahead. Some of the others won't be troubled by hunger. They have arrived at Neve Midbar. Here, they meet the females of the hairdresser tribe who have come to practice Hafifa in the river. Their 
beauty hypnotizes them, and the Asawants are enchanted by the splendor of these Amazons in the waterfall. They can spend hours with the Shampo in the river, an important activity for them. The Ar tribe are overwhelmed, and they know they have been lucky. The Shampo females notice them and prompt them to recite their good old expression. Huh? They will receive a sign that they are allowed to approach. Now they can come and get a free hair wash in the river. The mating season has begun. But times will not always be easy. A severe drought draws near and with it the migration of the tribes to the big city. Like this tribe of wandering Arsawatim on wheels. The Alpha Males. A pack of young Arsawats that commute in Alphas and Mustangs and who forewarn of their arrival. Their aim to mate with females from the Moadonim area of the reserve. These Alpha Wats are more sophisticated than the males from the R tribe and use more vocabulary. Poetry, Shira. Yes. No. This is the Selectorate, a fierce and sophisticated female who has mastered two syllables. Yes and no. Yes. No. Our Alpha Wats are confronted yes. with a serious problem. The selectory tonight yes. looks particularly fierce. Yes. Our friends from the R tribe observe the proceedings from the side, waiting for the right opportunity to get in. No. 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 The Alpha Wats are confronted with difficulty in entering the party and an argument develops. The Selectorate has no choice and she releases the most dangerous creature of all, the Russian bear. The Russian bears give chase and the Alpha Wats run for their lives. The members of the R tribe exploit the distraction to penetrate the party. The Alpha Wats are less fortunate, and it seems that the Russian bears have them cornered in a dark alleyway. The Russian bears beat the Alpha Wats badly, and they quickly lose consciousness. But the Russian bears won't be satisfied with just a beating. These bears like their ass in fried. The bounty will be substantial tonight. Many necklaces of gold. But upon our friends from the R tribe, fate has smiled. They managed to enter the party. Oh, 